Hi, my name is Connor Hickey. I'm Lead Solution Architect here at Dealflow. Uh, one of the questions we're commonly asked is to explain KYC and PYC uh, and to also to explain what eKYC and PYC methods are available through our Verification Hub service and also to uh, um, explain how we might use those in the context of some real life examples. So we'll try and delve into this topic a little bit today. So if firstly we touch on what KYC and what PYC is, uh, know your customer, eKYC, know your customer, uh, is validating a customer's identity. How can we validate that Connor Hickey has a real and valid identity? And there are various methods that can be used to do that, and I'll explain them in a little bit more detail later. Now, ePYC is proving your customer. This is authenticating your user. Uh, how do we prove that Connor Hickey is actually um, using the system at that particular point in time? Very vital in proving that Connor Hickey uh, signed, electronically signed a document. Um, so if we look at those two um, methods and how they're used in the context of e-contracting. Um, so in a typical e-contracting um, workflow, you would have an application stage where the customer's details and financial product details and product that they're uh, securing the loan against uh, are captured. And beyond that, we will have, or the client will have a KYC. Connor Hickey is taking a financial product and uh, Connor Hickey's details have been captured. Now, we want to prove that Connor Hickey has a valid identity. And that is usually a call to the deal flow verification hub where one of a number of different external services can be used. So that's how key, uh, KYC is used in the context of the overall uh, uh, e-contracting solution. Uh, we've got to remember that the uh, result of this KYC uh, is being stored on the DealFlow platform and held as evidence uh, for contract enforceability later in the process, but that really is explained in, uh, in other sessions. Uh, beyond that KYC, assuming a successful KYC, um, the electronic, the e-sign portion of the, uh, of the solution is, um, takes place. Now before we would let Connor Hickey um, sign, electronically sign a contract, we want to prove that Connor Hickey is actually the person who has the signing device and is ready to sign. And that's where ePYC comes into place. And again, that's a call to the Verification Hub service. And again, multiple ways that that can be, can be served. And we'll go into some of the different use cases um, for eKYC and ePYC. PYC a bit later. And once we've proved Connor Hickey is actually using the device, Connor Hickey is allowed to sign the agreement. So that's how eKYC and ePYC is used in the context of electronic contracting and eSign. Evidence captured and stored in the tamper sealed eSigned contract. So beyond that, we'll look at what services are available through the VHub, and we'll look at a number of different use cases uh, and see what different variations of those services we might use. So if I remove this diagram, and we go back to a simple representation of the verification hub, either the client calling the verification hub, or in the case of ePYC, it may actually be DealFlow ourselves who are consuming the verification hub. Um, now what uh, is available to us through the many providers integrated with the verification hub? Well, we've got uh, ID checks, we have uh, bank checks, We've got uh, warnings, knowledge-based authentication. So that is the series of questions and answers that a customer would want to 
um, get correct um, to prove their to prove their identity. Document verification, facial recognition, uh, and one-time passcode. Uh, so that's sending an SMS to a customer's mobile phone. Uh, the customer needs to enter that uh, code in the SMS into a workflow before being allowed to proceed. So they're, they're you know, a, a high level view of the, the, the most commonly used um, uh, identity services. Uh, and we can see for different use cases, different uh, services or different combinations of services could be used for KYC and EPYC. Um, so if we take um, a common use case here, so um, a retail, uh, uh, you know, retail bank are giving out personal loans, um, they might use a combination of uh, an ID check through a, you know, a bureau to uh, prove KYC, to validate the customer, and then in the UK commonly use knowledge-based authentication in a workflow uh, to prove the customer. So ID check on Connor Hickey, he's got a valid identity. Uh, so once that is passed, we allow, allow them to enter into the signing ceremony. And within the signing ceremony, Connor Hickey would have to pass the knowledge based authentication uh, test in order to e-sign his, his contract. Now, if we look at something like Europe with EIDAS, um, it, it may be slightly different there. We wouldn't have knowledge based authentication available in Europe. Um, so in Europe, we may use a combination of document verification uh, and one-time passcode. So uh, pass an SMS with the code sent to the, uh, to the customer's mobile phone, uh, and they would have to enter that code into the workflow in order to proceed. And then we would combine that with uh, document verification. They would have to uh, take a photograph of a passport or a national identity card. We would validate the authenticity of that card We'd extract the information, personal information from that card, and then we would uh, validate that against the application data of the of the contract. Uh, for a, a you know a motor loan um, uh, use case in China, another one of our markets, we would use a combination of one-time passcode and facial recognition. Uh, the customer would be expected to take a live photograph or. Um, a, a, a short burst of video um, and we would prove that against an existing picture of that customer, uh, very specific to the, uh, to the Chinese market. So that's an explanation of eKYC, ePYC, uh, what methods are available through the verification hub uh, and some real life examples of how we've used those methods uh, in the marketplace today. Thanks very much for watching.